John uh, chapter 13, verses 4 and 5, it says, he, he rises from supper. This is Jesus. First of all, uh, Jesus had just uh, partaken of the last supper with his disciples. And John goes on to elaborate what happened after that. Now, we recognize that he also uh, later on that night went to Gethsemane, and we recognize his prayer in Gethsemane, and um, eventually how he, how he was uh, uh, arrested and, and crucified. This all happened on that same night. Well, they had just partaken of their Passover meal. They partaken of that Last Supper. And it says there in the 13th chapter, the fourth verse, it says, He rises from the supper and laid aside his garments, and he took a towel and he girded himself. Verse 5, After that, he poureth water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Now, uh, this was an actual happening, of course. This was something Jesus was doing to teach his disciples a truth. In fact, this is, a, this is one of the very last messages of Jesus' life on, on earth at this particular time period, prior to his crucifixion, that he shared with his disciples. But it was one of high importance. And so, not only did he wash their feet, he, uh, not only did he preach this or teach this, he demonstrated it by washing, by washing their feet. Now, I want to share this with you a little bit allegorically. Uh, I, I don't believe reflecting on this allegorically takes away from its, its meaning, but really enhances it so that we can, we can see exactly the message that Jesus is portraying. Now, the first thing it says there, as you look at the scripture, it says, he rose from supper. He, ro he rose from partaking of this nourishment, of this activity with his disciples. Now, we recognize that the supper that he rose from was the Passover meal. And it was the very last supper that Jesus was to share on this earth. But it was a time where he ministered to them about the New Covenant. He, he shared during that Last Supper that this New Covenant is going to be ushered in in my blood. He took the bread and he broke it. And he, he shared with them, this is my body that's going to be broken for you. So it was a, it was a, it was a service per se, per, per se of Jesus ministering to his disciples, of his disciples gathering in the spiritual food with Jesus Christ, the Son of God, being enhanced, being uplifted, being edified by the things that Jesus was offering and teaching and sharing with them. Does everybody see that? This was the supper that he rose from. And I want to share with you, as Jesus demonstrated on this last supper, that this is something that you and I need to emulate. Because we too are gathered here today to partake of these things that Jesus Christ is teaching us. We are gathered here in a sense for this supper to be fed. Hopefully you've come to church today to be fed. Hopefully you've come to church today to be nourished. Hopefully you've come to church today to encounter Jesus, to be with Jesus, to sup with Jesus, to have that experience with Jesus. Amen? Amen? I hope that's why you've entered into this place, to encounter it. But as Jesus rose from supper, I want you to recognize that as this service concludes, or as this encounter includes, this time of refreshing, this time of being ministered to, this time of experiencing Jesus... There's a time where you need to rise. Right now, you need to bask in his presence. You need to, you need to feast in his blessings that he has for you. As we worship him, we're experiencing his presence in very real and powerful ways. At least I am. But there's a time where we rise from that. 
And it says that Jesus rose from that, and then it goes on and it says he laid aside his garments. And once again, I want to share with you this somewhat allegorically. He took off his religious attire. He laid aside, and Jesus took off his garments in, in, a, in a, a literal sense when he laid aside his royal robes. He laid aside his crown of glory to become humanity, to become a man. Well, at this time, he takes a, and he lays aside his garments. Now, I want you to see allegorically what we need to do. We need to come and we need to experience Christ and we need to experience his presence and we need to really have that powerful time of ministry with him. And hopefully that's what, that's what you're receiving and that you're getting. But there's a time then we need to rise up. And when we rise up, it's time to lay aside our religious garments. You know, there's an illustration within Scripture that Jesus taught of two religious people that were unable or unwilling to lay aside their garments. He talks about a man that was beaten and left for dead on the road. And he said a priest came by wearing his religious garments and looked down at the hurting man of humanity, a man that was potentially unchurched or a man that was certainly not living a life that was in accord with his standards. And he wore those priestly robes and he, with his priestly robes on, he crossed over and he continued on his journey looking down at that individual as, a, as the trash of life. As an individual that's getting what he's deserved because of the choices that he's made. And Jesus went on in his parable and he talked about a Levite, which indeed was a religious leader of his day, equivalent to a modern day deacon. And he couldn't lay aside his religious robes either because when he saw the hurting of humanity, he was too religious to stop and to minister to that need. And he walked over. Now, the only man that stopped in Jesus' parable and ministered to the man that was hurting was someone that didn't have the religious robes on. Someone that laid, potentially laid them aside. And I want you to see something here important, that when Jesus rose and he laid his garments aside, there's a time where we need to lay our holier-than-thou garments aside. We need to lay the garments I'm saved and you're not aside. We need to lay aside the garments, hey, you need to be like me aside. We need to lay them aside and recognize the fact that there is a, there's a world, there's a humanity that needs us to be real. And they need to encounter real and true and honest compassion. Amen? Amen. We need to lay aside those kind of garments as we minister to humanity. And Jesus demonstrated this because not only did he lay aside his garments, it says that he girded himself with a towel. And so he took off his religious garments, his religious robes, and he prepared himself to minister. Now, the parallel... I want you to see this because I want you to grasp this, okay? You're here today. You've joined us today in this assembly. You've gathered here to experience Christ, to be enriched by Him, to encounter Him. Hopefully, that has been your experience up to this point. Hopefully, you're, when you were participating in worship, you experienced something powerful and real like I did. You experience the presence of God in a very real way, in a very personal way. And I hope that's your experience. And I hope that's something that you long for and desire for. When you came here to hear the word, I hope those of you that participated in our Bible study this morning were enriched as God's word was expounded and as we reflected on it. We, it, was a, it was a lamp, wasn't it? It was a lamp to our feet. It was a light to our path as it ministered to us and built us up. As we desired that, we desired his presence. We desired his truth. We desired to be enriched. But as you rise up to go this day, and as we just saw in that little video clip, 
It's not just what we've experienced on Sunday, not what we've just to set aside Sunday for, but it's who we are on Monday. It's rising up and being someone that's real for the kingdom of God on Monday, on Tuesday, and on the rest of our lives. At your work, at your school, in the various encounters that you have in life, you need to rise up and then prepare yourself. And I hope this is one, something that we're all doing is that we're preparing ourselves to minister. Jesus girded himself with a towel. He recognized that there was no way that he would be able to accomplish the task that he was demonstrating unless he had the tools necessary to, to, to minister to that need. So he girded himself with a towel. And I want to encourage you along this line as well, is, is that when you wake up in the morning, that you gird yourself in prayer. That your prayer, you pray, Lord, I don't know how you're going to use me today, but I'm going to be attentive and I'm going to be willing. As, as I'm going to work, Lord, I don't know how you're going to use me today, but I pray, oh Lord God, that you would use me as a tool in your hand to minister to my employees, minister to my employer, minister to my customers. Minister to those individuals that I interact with because I, I want to be prepared. I want to be prepared to reach out and to be a light in the world that's so filled with darkness. And Jesus girded himself as he prepared for that. It goes on and it says that he poured water into a basin and he began to wash the disciples' feet. I want you to know, this is the King of kings. This is the Lord of glory. This is the creator of the universe. And he humbled himself to the extent that he was washing the disciples' feet, to the extent that Peter flipped out, as Peter usually did about things. He, he flipped out, and he basically said, what in the world are you doing? There's no way I can allow you to do this. He just couldn't. He, did, he thought, you should be the one wearing the royal robes. You should be the one. That we're, that, we're, we're, that we're ministering to, that we're, that we're exalting, that we're uplifting. And what Jesus was trying to teach Peter, he's teaching the rest of the disciples and he's teaching us. He says, the kingdom of God is for you not to walk around as the religious holy roller, as the individuals that I'm, I'm it and you're not. As individuals that walk around exalting themselves, criticizing and condemning and, and run, ridiculing a world that is lost. But you need to be someone that sees that world that's lost as people that just need the compassion of God. People that need to be touched. Human beings just like you and me that need that encounter of God. Jesus, Jesus himself in his very last message. He portrayed it in a, in, a, in, a, in a way of demonstration because he didn't want the disciples to forget and he doesn't want you and I to forget. That's what he's called you to be. That's what he saved you for. Not just for you to experience his glory, but for you to be a tool in his hand to reach out and to share that glory with others. And to minister to those needs. Do, do you see that today? I'm not telling you to go out and buy yourself a Harley Davidson motorcycle and join our club and join us in what we do. But God's got a call for you and what you're doing and for your life. But I'll tell you what it comes down to. There's a whole lot of people that play the church game. The church game is this. You know, you live like hell the, the, you know, the, the whole week and then you go on Sunday to get a taste of heaven. You know, that you, you, you do those things that are contradictory to the, to the teachings of Christ. You live according to your own standards and virtues. Your, your, your language, your behavior, your, the things that you're involved in is so contradictory. The whole, but you, but you, still want to, you still want to go and, and be righteous on Sunday. Go through the motions. That's playing a church game. You know what? Nobody likes that. The world doesn't like it when they see it in you. And the church doesn't, the true church doesn't like it because they recognize it's just being a bunch of phonies. 
We need to be real. We need to be real every day for the Lord. Your church experience should be exactly that. It should be a, a, an experience for your, ref, your refreshment, your feeding, your nourishment. But he, he's nourishing you for a reason. He's nourishing you and building you up for a reason. And it's not just so that you can be a, um, a Christian fat little baby. It's so that you can be a servant that rises from that encounter with Jesus, rises up and lays aside, lays aside those religious garments and goes out to a world with compassion, prepared by girding themselves with a towel to wash their feet or minister to their needs. You see that? Jesus, you know, he demonstrated it and he taught it so graphically that his disciples were shocked. And yet I think that many in the church world today are still missing it because we're still playing religion. And we're not getting it down to where it needs to be. You know, rather than looking at people, and we, we even talked about it in a Bible study this morning. You know, as Paul in chapter 11 of Romans was telling us, you know, there's going to be people that we consider enemies. We consider the enemies the people that are beheading Christians, of course. We consider enemies those who persecute us, those who tribulate us, those who come against us and complain against us or criticize us because of our Christian stand. And we consider them enemies. I want you to understand something. God doesn't look at them as enemies. He looks at them as individuals that he gave his son to die for. God looks at them with love, that while they were yet sinners, Christ died for them. And he wants us to look beyond those things that others are doing that are contradictory, of course, to, to our standards or to what we believe even are the standards of God. But we need to look beyond that and see people that just need an encounter with Jesus. And the best way that they can encounter Jesus is for individuals who have Jesus to take Jesus to them. And that doesn't mean preaching, jumping up on a hickory stump and preaching, preaching them to hell. That means reaching down to where they're hurting, reaching down to the problems and difficulties they're having and, and showing that compassion and showing that love and being willing to wash their feet. I'm thankful for the example that Jesus set for us, aren't you? I feel as if that I have many times come up short of that. But it's, it's not my desire, and it, it certainly needs to be our goal as a church. I really, I really believe that when we are the light that God has called us to be, there's going to be more and more individuals that are going to be drawn to that light. When individuals see in us not condemnation, not individuals that are out there con condemning or running down or criticizing, but when they see individuals that are out there sharing love and concern and compassion for them right where they're at, they're going to be drawn to what we have. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen? Amen. I'm not telling you to compromise the standards of God. That's certainly not the case. I'm not telling you to preach a different gospel, and that's not the case either. I'm telling you that we need to live the gospel. We need to live his love. We need to live his compassion. We need to rise up. May this be your goal and my goal today. As we, as we leave this, this church on this Sunday, that we will rise up and that we'll lay aside our religious garments and we'll gird ourselves, prepare ourselves for ministry. And we'll ask ourselves, even this day, Lord, I don't know who you're going to lead me to. I don't know the opportunities that are before me. But I want to be prepared because I want to do it. And I'm willing to do it. Here I am, Lord. Use me. And you know what's going to happen? 
the world that you're in is going to be affected for the kingdom of God. Lives are going to be touched because they're going to be seeing this in you. Now, I don't know exactly the effectiveness of uh, this motorcycle ministry and, and, and the, the various responses. We know that there were people there that totally rejected even getting in line when they heard exactly what it meant, which was sad. But there were others, you know, that got in the line, they listened to what was being said. And, and I'll tell you, more so than just the testimony, as, as a trick to share a testimony, was the fact that they were ministering to a legitimate need. Everybody needed gas. And gas costs money. <laughs> and they were reaching out and they were ministering to a legitimate need, and they were giving that drink of water in the name of the Lord. And I, I, what an opportunity to reveal Christ. Amen. Would you just take a few minutes and reflect with me this morning?